Hey Travis, you want to be in a movie? Yeah, are we talking robots and lasers? Or maybe knights and dragons? I don't know, but this episode of Kids Corner starts on a red carpet, and all sorts of stars are showing up. The red carpet? Is that like some sort of mystery movie or something? No, it's where famous people get interviewed about movies they help make. So, I'm not gonna be in a movie. One way to find out. Let's listen. Good morning, everyone, from Movie Land. I'm here in front of the Orient Theater on the Tinsel Turnpike of America, waiting for the rich and famous to arrive. It's anyone's guess who will show up next, and I do believe I see a limo rounding the corner. It's pulling up to the red carpet, and someone is stepping out. How's it going, everyone? Ladies and gentlemen, it's Lionel Richmond, the movie star from classics like Indiana Bones' Wheelchair of Destiny. Mr. Richmond, do you have a cameo in this premiering film? You'll have to watch it and see. Does that mean you don't remember? <laughs> uh, no comment. There you go, folks. One of the greats. From senior citizens came to... Oh, wait! It looks like our next star has arrived. It's Hope Fallswell, producer and screenwriter for this morning's presentation. Hope, Peter Mays, Fanboy Press. What are your feelings on this star-studded morning? Oh, it's just excellent, simply wonderful. Yeah, it is pretty amazing, isn't it? Oh, you know, you are so right, so incredible. I I mean, I can't even, it's just so, so good, so good. Always with the words, perfect description. Oh, it looks like this could be it, folks. The director of the movie herself, the world-famous, critically acclaimed, Monica Gray! Monica, over here! Mm, yes? I know you've got to be excited. This being your latest and greatest release of all time, what would you like to tell the folks at home? Mm, well, I'd tell them that this is a masterpiece for the ages. All ages, all places! You won't see anything like it. And if you do, I'll sue them for copyright infringement and plagiarism. Is that good, huh? Hmm, let me tell you something, young man. When I started directing movies, everyone thought it was about the glitz, the glamour, the spectacle. It's not about that. It was never about that. It wasn't? It was about... The art! The art! The art! Oh, isn't she the greatest? Such a brilliant creator. Simply divine. Oh, my. Yes. How delightful. She's crazy is what she is. Never worked with anyone so avant-garde in all my acting days. It's unsettling. Oh, it looks like they're starting the premiere. We better get inside. Excuse me, pardon me. All right, folks, looks like we're in. Just in time to... Shh, here they go. Hey, Mr. Jacobs, do you think you could hang that wreath again? Hang it again? Is it not in the right place, Monica? Oh, the wreath is perfect. But I had my finger over the lens when I recorded you doing it earlier, and I need another take. Another take, huh? All right. Anything for the arts. And this is the garage. It's where we hang out most of the time on Saturday mornings. Nice. When you said we were going into a garage, I was picturing something a little more greasy. This is more like a big living room uh, with a truck. Hi, Peter. Who's your friend? Hey, Mr. Jacobs, this is Hope. She's new in my class, and I thought I'd show her around. Help her make some good friends, you know? Nice to meet you, Hope. Welcome to my garage. Thanks. Of course, it's not always quite so decorated. Oh, we're just getting started. I got a movie to make. You make movies? Well, right now I do. I have to make a short video for my art class, and Mr. Jacobs is helping me out by letting me record him setting up everything. I call it... The joy of Christmas. Can I help? I don't know. Have you ever made a movie before? No, but I love hanging up decorations, especially for Christmas. I could use the help, Monica. I've been a character for a while and could use a rest. Mm, Okay, yeah, but I'm trying to make art here, so I might need to have you do some retakes. It has to be perfect. No problem. Come on, Pete, give me a hand with this garland. The what? I think I'll listen to the radio for a while if that's okay. It's your garage. Do what you want. Um, guys, can we start that from over here? I need big motions. Big motions. And they call us actors temperamental. (laughs) (sighs) 
Mind if I join you, Mr. Jacobs? Pull up a couch, Pete. The decorating getting to you? It's not the decorating, more like the director. Okay, Hope, I like the smile, but when you're putting up the bulb on the tree, make it less of a, I love Christmas smile and more of a, this decoration makes me think of my grandma kind of smile. Is there a difference? Here, let me show you. Monica's definitely determined to have a good result on her school project. Yeah, but she's taking all the fun out of it. Decorating for Christmas is supposed to be fun and festive. You know, not telling people what to do and how to do it every five seconds. Hmm, Hope seems to be enjoying herself. But she's different. I don't know if you've noticed, but she's got a permanent positive attitude. It seems to me that she's decided to focus on the things that matter most to her and isn't letting an overbearing force like Monica ruin it for her. Ah, so you do think that Monica's being a little too much. Why do you think I took a break? <laughs> oh, yeah. Tell you what, let's save hope before her infinite patience wears thin. Hey, Monica, how about you two take a rest for a bit? Hmm? Oh, okay. Yeah, I've got to go over my storyboards anyway. What have you guys been talking about over here? We were just noticing your good attitude this morning. It was quite encouraging. Well, yeah, I mean, it's Christmas decorations. What's not to be happy about? You mean besides Monic... I agree. But sometimes working hard on a project can be tiring, even if it is a fun project. Honestly, I hadn't given it any thought. I'm too busy thinking about all the great things that come with the Christmas season. You know, hot cocoa, relatives coming to visit, the songs, the smells, the glittering lights, and who can forget all of those great movies? And now I get to be in one. That's true. I guess I let the hard part of decorating distract me from the good things that are coming. Hmm, interesting. What's interesting, Mr. Jacobs? This conversation is reminding me of something the Bible talks about. And I might have a script about it. I'll be right back. A script? Are we making another movie or something? You'll see. Want to listen to the radio while we wait for him to get back? All right. And now, from the garage of Lionel Jacobs comes the fairy tale drama Jack and the Cow, an adapted biblical teaching about attention. Once upon a time, right before another famous story, there was a little boy named Jack. Hi there. Jack's the name. Jack B. Nimble. I live with my mother on our farm. Jack and his mother lived quiet lives on this farm. But Jack had his sights set on being the wealthiest man in the land. I've studied all sorts of books on how to make money, and it served me and Mom well. You see, at this time, there was a famine in the land. There had been no rain for months, and though they too had fallen on hard times, Jack's understanding of the market had kept them well fed. Mother, I've decided to sell our only cow. I've been reading the paper, and the value of stock is up. It's time to sell. And so Jack left for town with the family cow. What he didn't realize was that in the town there were tricksters lying in wait for innocent cow salesmen to fall into their snare. No, no, not the snare, Hilda. We aren't highway robbers. We're more of the swindling kind of tricksters. Oh, yes, of course, swindlers. So this guy coming up the road now, what's the plan for him? He's obviously been reading the newspaper. Stock is looking bullish. And that cow is mighty fine stock. He knows he can get a good deal. Right. So if we convince him that it's not good, we can buy it for... What do we have here in my pocket? Aha! We can buy it for these beans. Why do you have a pocket full of beans? Family heirloom. Anyway, once we trade in for these worthless beans, we can go sell the cow for what it's really worth. <laughs> Shh! Here he comes! Good evening, good sir. On our way to market, are we? Why, yes! I'm going to sell my cow for a fortune. Hmm, a fortune? This sad excuse for a beef sandwich? What are you thinking you'll get for it? This cow isn't worth ten cents. What do you mean? She's a good cow. If she was a good cow, why would you sell her? Good cows don't come cheap, and yours is as cheap as I've seen in years. As a professional cow judge, that is. Really? Oh, absolutely. She's judged all sorts of cattle, and I happen to be a cow aficionado myself. I can guarantee you that if you took this cow to market, you'd be laughed out of the country and thrown out of your ear. These words from the so-called experts confused poor Jack. 
He knew a lot about this cow. She gave good milk, had never been sick. And even if she wasn't a good cow, the market was desperate and he could still get a good price. Was he wrong? Had he made mistakes? Tell you what, my good man, we'll do the good and honest thing by you. We will? I mean, yes, we'll give you what we think this scrappy creature is worth and you can go home without being humiliated. By my calculations, this cow is worth a handful of these heirloom beans. That's it? Did she mention they were heirloom? Very important. Yes, passed down by my fairy godfather or something. I wasn't paying attention. Are you sure that's all she's worth? You don't have to take the deal. We're just trying to save you the time and your self-esteem. Jack looked at the cow and, fooled by the lies, agreed to the deal. He handed over the cow's lead and took the beans as paint. The trickster smiled as he disappeared into the distance. <laughs> what a sap! Selling a cow for some grimy old beans. Yeah, even if they are magical, we definitely got the better end of that deal. <laughs> wait, wait, what do you mean by magic beans? The moral is, God gives us good gifts all the time and has promised to give us even greater gifts if we live for Him. The thing is, the world will try to convince you that these gifts aren't worth anything and you should just forget about them or trade them for things that are truly worthless. That's why we need to be wise and use God's gifts the way He would want us to and to never stop striving for the treasure He has in heaven for us. Because that treasure, unlike a cow or a handful of beans, is priceless. All right, Mr. Jacobs. Slowly put the star on the tippy top. Zooming out. Pause and cut! Does that mean we're done, Monica? Yeah. I mean, maybe not decorating the garage, but I have everything I need for my video project for school. So now I can focus on having fun again. Thanks for putting up with me, everyone. Mom says I get a little oppressive when I'm working on my art projects. I think you mean obsessive. I don't know. Both work, if you ask me. Well, whatever, I mean. Thanks. No problem. I got to decorate, sometimes over and over, and I got to find out what it's like to spend a Saturday morning in the fabled garage of Lionel Jacobs. Did it live up to its reputation, Hope? I think so. Drama script? Check. Fun activities? Check. There is one thing that I haven't seen yet that I heard is a thing. Really? What did we forget? Well, you said that when we learn lessons around here, Mr. Jacobs has all sorts of Bible verses that help us know what God has to say about what we've been talking about. So far, I haven't heard one. I mean, sometimes it takes him a little bit to get warmed up. <laughs> I guess that's true, Peter. But I do have some verses where God talks about this kind of thing. I'm all ears. Okay. The first passage that comes to mind is Luke 12. This is where God explains that here on earth, it can be easy to be worried about having enough to eat or wear, you know, the basic stuff we need. And so a lot of people try to protect themselves by making a lot of money and trusting in their savings to keep them safe. Yeah, that's what a lot of people do. Is that wrong, Mr. Jacobs? Well, I would say it's good to be wise with our money, but when we start trusting our bank account instead of God to give us safety and comfort, that's where we have a problem. That's why God says instead to trust Him to take care of us. This verse tells us to give what we can to those in need. And when we do, we're storing up treasures in heaven where nothing can take them away from us. All right, that makes sense. Got any other ones? There's Colossians 3 that starts off by telling us that because we have been saved by believing in Jesus, we shouldn't get distracted by the things we can gain here on earth, but instead to keep our eyes on what will matter in heaven in other words, living in a way that pleases God. I'm sensing a pattern here. Then there's 1 Timothy, where God tells us not to be proud or trust in earthly treasures, but to do good, give to the needy, and to share what we have with each other, which stores up treasures in heaven for us so that we may truly live. I think we get it, Mr. Jacobs. Yeah, but what is treasure in heaven? If I'm supposed to be storing it up, I should probably know what it is. Ah, now. There's a very good question. And like treasures on earth, I think it can be a variety of things. According to these verses, it sounds like there will be some sort of reward for those who have shown people God's love. But according to verses like Psalm 
Proverbs 2.5 and 2 Corinthians 4.7, heavenly treasures can also be wisdom, knowledge, abilities that God gives us through His Spirit, and even just knowing what the Bible says. That's a lot to think about. Yep, welcome to the garage. Does the Bible say anything more about what treasures in heaven are? I'm not sure, Peter, but I'm sure if you look, you'll find some more examples that have slipped my mind. You want to go to my place and look for more verses, Hope? Yeah, that sounds great. Bye, Mr. Jacobs. Guys, there are Bibles here. You sticking around, Monica? No, I've got to get home to work on this project. Thanks for all your help. No problem. Would you mind turning off the radio before you go? No problem. <laughs>